tell you to <coughs> show you my latest uh, project. This is the housing that goes to a shaft for my lawnmower. Now, I have a Sears or a Craftsman lawnmower and um, every year this these blades, there's three blades on it, one of these break and they're made so cheap that it isn't even funny. There's supposed to be four bolt holes like this one right here on all those corners that are broke off. <coughs> and the problem with these things is that they're $85. And I'm sick and tired of giving Craftsman $85 for something that was inferiorly made, you know, and designed all these years. I've had the tractor for a good 12 years. <coughs> so what I decided to do, um, I built myself a uh, foundry the other day. And um, I want to be able to make these parts. Now this lid to this foundry here, <coughs> excuse me, the lid to this foundry was from an older one that I had, but it still fits on top of this, so I'm going to use it. This is what the uh, crucible looks like. I made a handle for it, which I have right here. I'll show you how it works. Put the handle in there, it grabs a hole with a pot. Oops, sorry about that with the camera. Grabs a hole with a pot after the metal's melted. <coughs> and then you use a little rod. You hold this up and you use a little rod on that back tab back there. This one right here. <coughs> and you pour that. Uh, that helps you to tip the bucket so you can pour it into a mold. So anyway, that's the crucible. It's made from a piece of six inch well casing. Alright. The handle is made out of three quarter, I think that is EMT. And then this strap. I made that and I cut the notches out on the milling machine. I drilled a couple holes as well to, so there wasn't so much to mill out. And I just bent it in a shape that will go around that uh, crucible. So the crucible is a piece of well pipe, well, well casing, with a piece of uh, plate that I welded on the bottom. I tested it with water and it holds water so it will hold aluminum. Now, this making this furnace was so easy that anybody can do this. Now I'm going to have to take you to my garbage bin. Let me turn the light on here. Anyway, all right, here's what you need to make that thing. And what I wanted to show you, let me get all the parts together here. I guess I should have been ready for the video, but I wasn't. Whoa. So this bucket, I bought this bucket at Tractor Supply. I think it was five bucks. Okay, for that plastic bucket. It's actually a nice bucket. It's a food grade bucket for feeding cows and stuff, so we can use it for our chicken. Anyway, the bucket and this is, I think, like a half a bushel thing. It's made by Barron's. They make a bunch of containers. But Tractor Supply has these things. Um, let me get a tape measure and I'll measure it for you so you, in case you're going to do this, you can get the right size bucket. <sighs> I just got up a little bit ago. It's really nice today. I love this cooler weather. It's around, it was around 59 last night. Alright, so anyway, this bucket measures 17 and a half inches there across. And it's roughly a foot high, 11 and something high. <coughs> so, when you mix up the stuff for this, and I'm going to give you the recipe here in a minute, you end up using this bucket, you make that stuff really loose and then you push this bucket into it and it'll fill up the container. There's things on YouTube I think the guy, there's one there I can't think of his name, I want to say the king of redundant but I think of it's something like that but anyway look up how the guy did it because I didn't make a video of me actually doing it but I will give you the recipe for this exact size thing here what you need is a half a bucket of some sand. So I used just some Jersey sand that I had up at uh, 
my other house I'm building. So you need Plaster of Paris. Now this Plaster of Paris, I got at Lowe's. You can buy it. Um, it's in a bag, but it's also in this box, which is really nice because if you've ever done any kind of cement work, you know how much of a pain in the ass it is when cement gets wet, a cement bag. So you need one of those. They're 25 pounds. Plaster of Paris. Okay? Plaster de Paris. I don't know how to speak French. And then you need three. This is what I use. Now you can do it other ways, but this is what I use. Perlite is a very good insulator and perlite is inert. And if you see my uh, greenhouse gar uh, v videos, you know that I use a lot of perlite. Now I don't usually buy it this way, but I bought it in these small bags because it was convenient for me. So you can buy these at Lowe's as well. Let's just get back. Where the heck is the American amount of what the hell is in here? Eight dry quartz. Okay, so this is eight dry quartz. So I bought three of those. So one bag of plaster, 25 pounds. Three bags of perlite, which is uh, eight dry quartz. Okay, three bags of perlite. And a half a bucket of sand. And what I did was I threw everything in the container before I put any holes in it or anything. Put it in the container and my wife and I mixed it up dry. Then I took about a bucket and maybe, I don't know, I want to say a bucket, that red bucket and a third of water. And I threw it into that and started mixing it. Now it got to, before I put the water in, I took, I had the dry mix mixed thoroughly, but if I would have put the water and the dry mix in together, it would have overflowed. So I just used the box, the cardboard box there. I set it next to this thing. And it took out about maybe four shovels of stuff just to give me room to mix it. So then I mixed that up and it was really wet. And then I took the stuff that was in the cardboard box that I had set to the side and put that in there and mix that all up. And then after I mixed it up, it was about maybe two inches from the bottom or so, three inches. I took the red bucket and pushed it down into it until the uh, the the um, stuff on the side here to mix was up to the top. Okay. Now that bucket was a perfect size for my crucible. I want and it wasn't by habit or chance. I actually figured it out. So when I put that bucket in there, that gave me room just the right amount of room to be able to get the crucible in there. So then what I did was um, leave it set up. And once I leave it set up, I took my block and tackle, hooked it to the handle of the red bucket, and lifted it off the ground about a half an inch. And I put one of these uh, rubber mats underneath it. And all I did was tap the bucket. This was after about an hour. I tapped the bucket, the bucket pulled right out of there gave me a pretty nice finish. Now I wasn't, the bottom needed to go down just a tiny bit so I scraped the bottom which isn't going to hurt because I actually want to drill a hole through the bottom which I'll do with a hole saw and uh, in case the crucible fails. But And I also drilled on the side here an inch and three eighth hole with a hole saw and then I went in on an angle so that the flame is going to come in like this. It's going to come in this direction and swirl around in here when it's done. Now you got to be patient with these things. If you take this and start firing it up right now, there's moisture inside that. Even though it looks hard and it feels hard, on the very inside there's moisture in there that has to work its way out. So if you would fire it up right now, that moisture is going to force this thing to crack all up into pieces. So you got to be patient with these and let it sit for a while. I'm probably going to let it sit for a good month because I'm not ready to make my part. But anyway, what I was getting at with that lawnmower part there is that's the thing that's pushing me to make the furnace because I want to be able to make those on, on my milling machine and my lathe so that I don't have to buy any more. But I know that this thing's going to have me making all kind of parts because I also am working on AR-15 parts and I can, I'm pretty sure I can make a, those parts from scratch. Anyway, um, so that's how I made that. So again, just to go to recap this, you can buy that red bucket 
and that galvanized container you can buy down at Tractor Supply. They have them on the shelf. The two of them together cost me 20 bucks. Okay, so it's 20 for that. And then it cost me 60, I believe, for three bags of perlite. Three bags of perlite. Okay, and one. Actually, I bought two of the plaster Paris, but I bought another one in case I need to make another lid. To make the actual furnace itself, you can. I'm talking about the bottom part now, not the lid. You can get away with one of these. So if you buy two plaster Paris, three of the perlite, and a half a bucket of sand, you're in good shape to make this thing. Um, this lid I had from a previous furnace that I made and I'm just going to use that un unless something goes wrong with it. I'm going to use that to cover this up to retain the heat. But that's what, a, what my project is now and like I say uh, I want to be able to replace that lawnmower part. Let me turn my light on here. I want to show you what else I got going. I want to replace that lawnmower part and be able to make them because I have neighbors who have the same problem. But I'm also making um, these jigs. Now this is one I made, that's the original, so I'm making copies so that I can uh, drill out these 80% lowers. And I honestly believe I can make the entire lower. I just gotta, you know, measure one up and go from there. But that's what I'm thinking I might do with the aluminum. So a buddy of mine brought me a bunch of aluminum and uh, little scrap pieces. I'll show you some of that while I'm at it here. Two of these containers are filled with all kinds of aluminum scraps. So I can cut these up or just find the smaller ones and throw them in the bucket right away. But that's where I'm at with this so far. Now, as far as melting the metal goes, and I need to cut a bigger hole in there. I was originally going to make myself a torch to go into that thing, but I decided to use this thing. What I got on that shelf there is a propane torch. I got it at Harbor Freight with a piezo, I guess it is, starter for not, you don't you have to use matches with it and that's the model number. So I'm going to use that with the propane tank I have and I'm going to figure, make a nice uh, support to hold it and I'm going to use that to melt the metal, I think, if that works. So um, if you just, you know, keep watching the videos and stuff, that's what I'm going to do uh, on one of my next projects. I want to make a way to hold that thing though. That sucker is pretty heavy. To, hurt my back yesterday picking it the heck up. So I'm thinking about taking it maybe out right outside the garage or somewhere to the side and drive uh, an I-beam I have into the ground and set that on it with a little bit of bracing and then I can just work right there. So I gotta check it out see how it's gonna work but that's where I'm at so far. Um, as far as making the crucible like I said this is a piece, and I'll show it to you over here. This is a piece of six, six inch well casing, water well casing. Buddy of mine gave me that. I just welded two bolts in there, one on each side across from one another. I've drilled holes, put the bolt all the way in, put a nut, put a nut on. I drilled holes on each side, put the bolt over a nut, put it in there, welded that on. Then I welded this little hook on here so that I can grab that with a rod to tilt it and I just ground myself a little surface there where I'm hoping the aluminum is going to come out. If it doesn't work there real good I'll heat this up and beat it into a, because uh, this well casing is really tough stuff, I'll beat it into a funnel shape. So that's the crucible. Alright guys, so that's where I'm at with this latest project. I'm going to clean my mess up here. This plaster is something else. I haven't used plaster for a while. When I was eight years old, I used to mix plaster for my dad so I could plaster walls in the old houses. Anyway, that's where we're at so far. 
build, building a new furnace and we'll see how it goes. So have a good one guys. Thanks for watching. Bye.